What's going on guys? This is the Brigade once again, and we're back at it with another session of Killzone Shadowfall. Alright guys, we are back at it in the remains, and you know, like I've said plenty other times, this is one of my favorite maps. Now, the title of this particular video is basically going to be, um, the support class is all about being a team player. And, um, you know, in this particular video, I'm just going to talk about, you know, just a few things that I see, uh, mainly with regard to my own tactics. Now, I know a lot of people have their own tactics with regard to the support class, so, you know, I'm not saying this is how you should play. I'm just going to point things out based upon how I think, how I see things, how I analyze them, and the tactics that I use and why. All right, so this first mission is um, search and destroy defend for a lot of you guys that are not familiar with kill zone this is basically a situation wherein the opposition have to search for at least one uh, at least one but more than likely two targets and they have to destroy them right so we are supposed to defend so it's basically a situation where we are defending the target now as a support guy you know, you guys are going to notice a lot of things. Case in point, I'm going to revive a lot of people. That's my, primor that's my primary responsibility. Secondly, one thing about me, a lot of times I don't engage uh, the opposition head on. In a lot of cases, I'm looking for routes to flank. Uh, because, you know, some things that I've noticed when I uh, play Killzone Shadowfall, they'll be like, let's just say there's a standoff. Right? You'll have your team and the opposite teams at odds with each other at one point. And all they do is just keep dying and suit shooting at each other at the same spot me on the other hand once I see a standoff or some type of concentration one thing that I like to do is circle around for the flank and as long as I circle around for the flank either I can set up uh, my team my team for success by placing a spawn beacon uh, to where my team can go ahead and deter them by flanking them or I can set up a uh, in place ground turret to where wherever they are the direction to which they are uh, approaching my in place ground turret is there to deter them and as long as they have um, a turret that they have to face that's more likely we can come from the back or the side you know the left or the right flank them and get more kills in so my tactics with regard to uh, the support class I am not necessary and you guys are going to notice this you know, a lot of times where there's a lot of action, a lot of times I'm just running around uh, reviving uh, my teammates or I'm trying to find a real good place for me to drop either a spawn beacon or the ground in place uh, support turret. Right, so that's what you guys are going to notice. So for a lot of you guys that like to get in there and run and gun, keep in mind, I do not play the assault. And even when I do, it's very rare because I really like the support class. The support class is basically uh, the backbone to any good team. Right, so if you guys have noticed, in a lot of cases, I'm just going to go back and forth. I'm going to get my kills here and there. But what I'm focusing on is tactical placement of either a spawn beacon ground and placement turret or um, I'm looking for any opportunities to revive my fallen teammates now one thing to keep in mind with regard to reviving your teammates um, I have a rule that I try to play by <clears throat> with regard to reviving them one thing is number one I'm not going to run all the way across the map to revive anybody right and no support class should be expected to run all the way across the map my rule is if you're within a 30 meter radius I'll run to you as long as um, you're not receiving too many fires because sometimes you'll have a sniper off into the distance and they're just waiting for you to try to revive but another thing that you can do you know for a lot of you guys that may be kind of new to kills on shadowfall you're not necessarily familiar you do not have to run all the way up on a fallen opponent, I mean on a fallen teammate, to revive them. As long as you have a straight line of sight and you can target them through the sights, you can actually hit, uh, revive them from a distance. So keep that in mind, guys. You don't always have to run all the way up on your buddy just to revive them. In a lot of cases, you could just go ahead and point your reticle, and if you're really really far you could just go ahead and look down your iron sights to revive them 
guys notice we're going here. We got a few good support guys on our team because I just got revived after getting killed. So we're good to go. And another thing to remember for a lot of guys that might not know. Um, when you are being revived, well actually once you're revived, um, that death is not considered an actual death. Right? Now the person who killed you will get credit for a kill. But you won't get another, um, uh, you won't be credited for another death as long as you're revived. So in other words, let's just say um, I have no deaths. Right, and let's just say right here someone threw a grenade and I died. As long as I was revived by a support, that death would not necessarily be considered as an actual death on the record. Because you know the game keeps records. Right, they keep track of your kills, your headshots, your assists. Uh, and whatnot. So that's how it goes as far as being revived. The person who killed you will get credit for the kill, but you will not get a clicker um, for being. Uh, for, you will not get a check in the, in, in the column for a death. Right. So that's kind of another incentive to have a lot of good support guys. Now another thing with the support class that I do know a lot of people are kind of. Uh, turned off when it comes to selecting a class to play is the fact that a lot of the support class weapons have a lot more recoil than um, specifically the assault class you know and, and I think that's a good thing you know each weapon has their own uh, properties you know a lot of the assault class weapons they have very low recoil and a high uh, firing rate Whereas the support class weapons, they have a little more recoil and they, you know, their um, rate of fire is a little slower. But at the end of the day, those weapons are still good. Now, personally, I use the shotgun a lot. Right? And even though I use the shotgun a lot, I still use a lot of the other weapons. And, you know, probably uh, in future videos, I'll showcase and talk about the specifics with regard to other weapons. But... For the most part, I think I use every single support class weapon except for this kind of lightning. I don't know what type of weapon it is, but I'll showcase it one day in the future. Right. Now, uh, for a lot of you guys that may have recently purchased PS4 and you're kind of don't really know if you want to get Killzone Shadowfall, at least for the multiplayer, guess what? Guerrilla Games is going to go ahead and have a free Killzone Shadowfall weekend. Now, unfortunately, it's not going to be until next month. So between the 28th and 29th, you guys will get a free weekend of Killzone Shadowfall multiplayer. And I'm hoping if you guys are PlayStation Plus members and you have your PS4, please take the time to experiment with it. I can almost guarantee you'll like the game, especially if you have experience with first-person shooters. Now, if you have zero experience with first-person shooters, Right. I mean, I'm not going to say that you won't like it, but definitely try it just to see. Because honestly, before Killzone 2, I had never played a first-person shooter. Killzone 2 was my first experience. And then after that, I played Battlefield Bad Company 2. And from then on, I'm just stuck with the Guerrilla Games Killzone franchise because I just love it personally. Um, now, uh, another thing. Currently, we do not have any uh, in-game chat. We only have party chat. But guess what? Guerrilla Games has been uh, really responsive with regard to the forums. And they are working on not only the in-game chat, but also the clan system. Now, unfortunately, the clan system will not be complete until the beginning of next year. But, I mean, hey, that's only a little over a month. So what I plan to do uh, once they come up with the, with the clan system... Right. Um, hopefully, I can get some guys. You know. Hopefully, I can get Bruno. I don't know if Rico, uh, if uh, Rikiu plays uh, first-person shooter, first-person shooters. But if he does, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, some of my subs or anyone else who's um, particularly interested. You know, if you guys want to get a clan together, I think it would be perfect. Number one, because um, not only can we participate together and play as a team, but we can do uploads to do a little review, talk about tap tactics, tricks, what we did wrong, what we did right, and you know, not only uh, will we be able to see for the clan's sake, but also a lot of, they'll provide for some good for some good uploads. Right, and that's just an idea out there for everybody who's uh, thinking about, actually who either 
currently has Killzone Shadowfall or who is thinking about getting it in the future. Because like I said, um, I don't know I don't know too much about the single player as I haven't played it, but the multiplayer is 100% awesome. And, um, you know, in a few videos in the past, I talked a lot about being limited to the 7v7s, but Guerrilla Games have really listened to us on the forums because now they have the full 12v12s, right? And these 12v12 uh, war zones are awesome, extremely exciting. I mean, you get killed like... I mean, it's crazy. The action is definitely crazy. And for a lot of you guys that may be starting off with Killzone Shadowfall, I wouldn't personally suggest for you to start off with the tw with the 12v12 war zones because it can really be overwhelming. Now, I'm kind of used to it because I played a lot of Killzone 2, Killzone 3, so it's not really all that bad, but it's still even overwhelming for me, right? Because keep in mind, for a lot of you guys that are used to Call of Duty and uh, Battlefield, there is no aim assist, right? So there is a learning curve. And like I said before, since the game is um, centered on objectives, you're going to have to be a lot more tactical than just running around in a circle, you know, trying to get headshots and whatnot. Because you have to invest your energies on trying to complete the objective. Right, so like I said before, it's an all-around great game in my personal opinion. You know, if you're kind of still, you know, don't really know if you want to play it or not, Please take the time to invest in, well actually you don't even have to make an investment, just go ahead and download uh, the free weekend that's going to be next month. And I, like I said before, you can go ahead and Google the information, but I believe it's specifically on the 28th and 29th of next month. So just a few days after Christmas, right? Hopefully a lot of you guys will get your consoles after Christmas, and if you're kind of up in the air about what games to get, you can go ahead and at least download the free weekend of Killzone Shadowfall multiplayer, you know, just to kind of make some better informed decisions. Alright, so enough about that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and wrap this commentary up. Um, stay tuned for future videos. I will definitely continue to do my Killzone Shadowfall for noobs. Still dealing with the support class, which is my favorite. <laughs> so hey, until next time, Martyrs Brigade is out.